Can you imagine going through life not feeling beautiful, feeling less than? Dove did a research and they found that 96% of women in the world will not describe themselves as beautiful. This is something that can take you down a vicious circle of negative self-talk and low self-esteem. And I've been there. My name is Vicky. I'm the co-founder and designer at Nextor Goddess LLC and I create jewelry to help women like me Unleash the goddess within, feel gorgeous just as we are, and stay unforgettable. Fear. Fear is the elephant in the room in entrepreneurship. Show me an entrepreneur that's not feeling fear, and this may be a person that is not taking enough risk. So for me, navigating fear doesn't have something to do with minimizing it, it has everything to do with handling it. So I say, I sit myself down and tell myself, hey, fear is something that is there because it's useful, because it's a protective mechanism. But usually this is something that is triggered by a thought of what might happen in the future. And I walk myself through the scenarios. Let's see, what's the worst case scenario? Then that's the best case scenario. What's the risk you're taking? And is it worth it? And I remind myself that I've been through negative case scenarios many times in my life and I came out and it was okay in the end. They helped me grow. So when you realize that part of your fear is normalized. Then the second thing I'm doing is I am disrupting my negative train of thought because I do get into that negative train that says I can't do this, this is too much, I will fail and everything. And I have a trick for that. <laughs> I use our charms on our goddess bracelets and that goddess charm there reminds me that there's this power within me that I can do anything I set my mind to and it anchors me to this positive feeling. And it can work for you too. Find something that anchors you to a positive feeling and every time you feel the fear, touch it, take a look at it, whatever it is that you can do to disrupt the negative pattern and you're going to see that down the line it becomes easier and easier and the third thing i'm doing for fear is i'm reading a lot of um stories of people who have been successful and i see how they faced their fears but when above them felt the fear and did it anyway because sometimes we feel like hey i'm a failure if i feel the fear i shouldn't be feeling it that's not it. Sometimes it's just all about feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Being driven and motivated, I have the words of Rebecca Minkoff in my head. You're going to be an entrepreneur. You're going to have a hundred reasons why you should quit. You should shut your company down, but you will be holding on from that one thing that keeps you going and you will be going down the path until you succeed. And this is so right. For me, creating jewelry, spreading my message, that's a gift that I was given. And I believe the only reason why I have been given that gift is that someone out there needs to receive it. There's a woman out there that needs to hear this message from me. She would love to wear my jewelry because my jewelry is what's gonna make her feel that way. Nobody else's. So if I, if I stop doing what I'm doing, I'm doing a disservice to her. I'm not offering her what I have to offer. The smile of that one woman that needs my message, that loves my jewelry, that's what keeps me motivated and going down the hard times. And I also, as I said before, I'm reading a lot of stories of entrepreneurs that went through hardship and made it in the end. Nobody had this straight line. Most of them had moments of failure, failed businesses, but they went on and at some point they, they found their thing and they did it they crushed it so i believe that if you stay the course in the end success is gonna come find you 
what I would say to an entrepreneur that's just starting out is first find where your passion lies, but also find what the world needs. Because a successful company lies at the intersection of your passion and the need. There is where, you know, the magic happens. The second one is, as you're starting out, reach out for mentorship, find a coach, find people around you and surround yourself with people that have a positive mindset, that are sportive, but also that are going through the same thing as you are. Other entrepreneurs in multiple stages of business, this has the power to really push you forward instead of you taking steps that you're not sure where they're leading you are going down a path that other people have gone down and that they have been successful in and also of course as you're taking advice listen to your gut it's fantastic to have advice from people who have done the one thing or another and they have been successful but also you should know that not everything that has worked out for someone else is going to work out for you. There is always, you know, a risk and a process and listen to your gut, listen to, to your emotions and write down your numbers as you're doing things and you're trying things out, track the results on a sheet of paper. And soon enough, you're going to know what's working out for you and what's not working. And it's going to show you the road ahead. <laughs> Can you show me an entrepreneur that says, I don't mind success. I don't mind feeling successful, being successful. <laughs> I personally can't. I believe this person doesn't exist. However, sadly, I can show you many entrepreneurs that have reached wild success as society is defining it and they're so unhappy some of them are even taking their lives so there's a lesson for us there success must be measured through the lens of our life's values if my life's values are sustainable living a big family spending time with my family and a simple lifestyle should a Lamborghini be the measure of my success? The measure of your success should be internal and attuned to what it is that you're looking for in life in general. And then in business, you also have to realize that success has a different phase in different stages of business. In your first three years, success may be something as simple as we're still going, we're still alive because most businesses in these first three years are going to fail. After those first years, success may be looking through the lens of numbers, how much we are growing, how much our revenue is increasing, those seven digits, eight digits, nine digits, those may come later down the line. You have to be set out for them. Some businesses are going to hit these numbers in their first years, but those are the exception. And I don't believe that success should be measured by exceptions, because if you are always looking at the people that are having what is not normal, you're never going to be feeling successful, fulfilled or happy. Mm -hmm.